Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. This is kind of a Got it. interesting and different okay. style of doing a uh, well, Zoom, because now we're going to talk about something that's very topical today, the AI movement, how it applies to us, and, for, and particularly how it applies to commissions. And I'm, I'm really grateful for you guys joining me today. I'm grateful for Vivian Wang to being here as well, because her and I kind of went off on this awesome tangent exploring what AI can do for uh, not just the artists, but for the gallerists as well as the clients to create uh, virtual work. But let me get started here and share my screen and feel free to interact anytime during this talk. It's very informal. So we still do our Zooms every weekend. There's Carrie next to me. We were uh, down in, uh, in, uh, in St. Petersburg. Uh, the International is ending in like a few days, but it will remain up on most of the rooms. We're just going to be working this room for a show of Zora Polova and Stefan Pala I'll talk about in a second. The NGG exhibition continues. We're going to be catching up with Slate Grove when he's ready, who was this month and wasn't able to get his show together, which is fine. This is all informal. And then we have Pearl Deck coming up next month from Chicago. She's an incredible artist and a great talent. We wanted to have her. She was our very first uh, uh, winner from last year going again. So look and tune in. I think it's September 2nd we're doing the Zoom. So Zora Polova's show along with Stefan Pala. Make sure you have a chance to see the, ex the work in the exhibition. Come see the show. I'll set it all up in the front room. It'll be a great experience. Love to see you all. So on topic, AI and the futures of commissions. This is really exciting because this is kind of new to me. and I'm not an expert at all in this, um, in this little world of AI, but I've dabbled a bit. My wife and I have played a bit uh, with some of these different services. And even Ferdinand, the founder of the gallery, has played a little bit with some of the AI chat services, just exploring what they can do. And, you know, the big strike going on right now in California with Hollywood is about securing, you know, human positions in the world of creativity versus dumping it all on these AI robots. Well, I'm no expert in this, and I figured they'll work it out. I figured it's a management issue now. Everybody becomes management, I manage our robots, who knows? But long story short, for us, it's creativity and how it can be a great tool. So this recent increase of AI tools, there's so many out there. I even have access to an app, an AI app that helps you build AI, helps you build other apps. It's, I don't know how it works. I've tried to figure it out, but I have no idea. But there's so much stuff out there. There's machines, I don't want to overwhelm you people, but there's machines that can take a picture of you and then you can talk and it'll make your face talk. You never have to film yourself again. I mean, there's all these services out there. So AI can do a lot of things. It's not like it's, awake like in the movies it's mostly like what can the what what cut what can the pro robot be programmed to do to make it intuitive and make it work well so the first thing we'll talk about is things like chat gbt and claude 2 so these are uh typing based uh services where you type a question into or you ask it for a service and it gives you back the concept so like for this particular example and you probably can't see this on your screen but i just typed into the robot how can AI be used to create physical ideas for art? Like I just typed it in there and it gives you uh, basically an itinerary of different answers. You know, these are all complicated things. I don't quite understand the data set collection, choosing an AI approach, data processing, model training. But these are all uh, obviously AI terms that are used to create activities and art via using AI. There's services out there that probably take advantage of these. I've noticed that a lot of the AI systems there aren't that many. There's a lot of creative people that use it for their own styles. So this is uh, this is Claude. It's a little more friendly than ChatGBT, where you can just log into Claude 2 and type a question in, and, and you get an answer. And uh, it's pretty wild. So I was talking to Larry Seabrook, who may be joining the call, um, who wrote a question into the responsibility of uh, environmental effects of glass artists. What can you know? What is the effect of glass artists? on the environment and it wrote an essay for him in probably about 4.7 seconds detail after detail talking about you know pretty matter of fact concepts of what glass blowing does the materials used what can be done efforts on both sides recycled glass to make it better and he has basically an entire essay he can use completely free and clear to talk about what he wants to talk about um I asked the same question about AI creating art. This is it again, but it's from Claude. And then um, I asked it, what are, who are the most important artists using glass as their medium today? 
and it pops out some people I know and some people I don't. Like I know Chihuly and Awewey and Karen Lamont and Berta Valine. And then there's people, I know I kind of know Ronnie Horn, but there's some other people on this list I don't know. So I'm using a little bit of the AI to educate myself in what the computer believes is important. Then I asked it how to make the best chicken soup, <laughs> right? And it gives you the answer. This is the best recipe that I know of, says the robot. It gives you the whole recipe. I need salt and pepper, cloves, and fresh dill, parsnips, onions, and obviously a whole chicken. And I could follow this word for word. You can ask Alexa. Alexa will give you the same kind of thing, but it's there. Like almost anything you can think of, you can ask it. It doesn't have like feeling, so it won't respond to those kind of questions. And it sometimes can't get into particulars because some of the AIs, maybe for our own protection, don't have access to the full internet. So there's a whole different community of the concept of the, the right to do this and AI, but mostly the surface stuff is what we're we're using. So then after the, the text-based AI, there's like 2D art and digital art. So I discovered this actually watching uh, the news on Channel 4. They were talking about Midjourney. I'm like, what is Midjourney? And it's a uh, uh, AI that you can access online or on your phone where it can create visuals for you using text-based writing. And they're, they're, it's advancing day by day because you can actually use different services inside of Midjourney to make your projects even more and more better. So I asked, what is out there beyond mid journey and I'll get into what, what it looks like. And there's all these different services I've never even heard of because I asked chat GB or uh, Claude to the chat AI what I should look into and look at all these other bullet points of online systems that are very similar. So there's other people doing the same kind of thing. So here's a puppy, right? This is a cool little piece, right? Done by somebody online, probably with text base talking about what kind of dog they like and boom, this gets output by a computer and AI. What's interesting about this is when I was watching on the news, when this was early on, people were making these and putting them out there, but not clarifying that these were made by an AI generator, right? So that's became, in my opinion, something that should be disclosed in the process because it qualifies like what you're buying and what you're getting versus the art alone. And that's how I feel. Another really cool one is flying spaceship. Someone must have been having a good time with a, uh, a mid-journey system creating these kind of visuals i mean look at the shadowing of this ice cubes dangling in the air it's pretty impressive stuff I, I mean it would take a lifetime to master this with a with paint and experience and it's possible to do but this is all generated via the system and that's why the clarification is needed this one i thought was really cool i found this one on my phone from when i first started playing with mid journey somebody else was making this on the mid journey system i don't know what she or he typed in to create something so stunning and beautiful but it's there again, all digital art. So this was mine, right? So I just typed my name in to uh, Midjourney. This is what popped out. I think I typed in me, my name and my wife's name. And the, obviously none of them look like me. So it doesn't know anything, right? But the idea is that uh, it's having fun creating systems. And there's a way to modify Midjourney now where you can actually take a face and put it in there and have it use it to put you next to Abraham Lincoln or whatever. And it's kind of interesting. My son loves Blippi. So I, this is a, a fun character from a kid's show on YouTube. So I figured I would type in Blippi and Dinosaur and see it would pop up and creativity ensues. Uh, this one, I was just playing around with glass and uh, crystals and, and the seas and you get some more visuals. And this was kind of a wild one. I typed in Ghost in the Machine and this is what popped up. And I could actually take this one and tweak it to make it more and more crazy looking, but uh, this is this is my art. Congratulations, you are all seeing my art for the first time, but now you're gonna never see it again. And then this was one that was created with the other uh, virtual AI system that took four minutes to do. So I guess it goes to show some of these are more advanced than others. They're not all running off the same system. So um, reimagining the commission process. So think about this, right? You have an artist you want to work with or like. You see a body of their work. You have some ideas. You have some color notations and concepts. And, uh, you know, we can, if the artist is up for it, we can upload samples of that artist. I'm hoping to incorporate this on our website in the future where the samples are up there already. And you add, these are the samples, some of the samples of the Vivian Wang pieces that I put up online to teach the, the systems called exactly.ai to learn about Vivian's work. But I put, I didn't know what I was doing. So I put fronts and sides and backs just to get, 
I figured the more the merry, right? The more ideas, the merry. And so it allows only for 15. So I did this without talking to Vivian, but I wasn't doing anything with it. I was just experimenting. So after talking to Vivian, she liked the idea of what we were doing. So I wanted to bring it to the forefront and it doesn't work for all artists, at least now. There's some concepts that maybe like we were talking before this chat about the linear versions of artwork that works better with or more are pieces that are similar in style along the board of the artist's career versus abstract. I tried um, Harvey Littleton. It did not work very well. And I tried a few other artists, but um, overall, we're going to talk about Vivian today just to get an idea. So this is the text, the very first thing I put into uh, Executive.ai to, to see what it could do, right? So this is off the top of my head. I said, two boys are separated when a war breaks out between factions ruled by the elements. One is fire, the other is water. A master weapon is held by each faction's leader, though ends up in the hands of the boys who were once friends. They are longing for their lost friendship as that time has passed. And boom, out of the robot comes this incredible piece by Vivian Wayne that Vivian has never touched yet. But the idea is, you know, this is interesting. Then I talked to Vivian about this. And Vivian, you're obviously allowed to chime in anytime you want. But I mean, look at these two figures. They're two beautiful boys. It, they, they look like Vivian Wang's to me. I could have sworn this was made in her studio and she had him photographed by her photographer too. And the, some of the concepts are different. Vivian said she's never approached hair like this. She loved the outfits. You know, they fit well into her style and design. And I loved it too. That was like absolutely amazing. So we'll continue on. So I'll kind of breeze through these so don't take up too much time. And we're going to make one of Vivian's works live during the Zoom. And Vivian, you can help too. It'll be a lot of fun to just do something fun and different. So, so like I said, not everything is possible. And a lot of it, like I said, is a tool, something you can use to get new ideas and tweak concepts. So second piece, definitely different from what Vivian would make, I would, I would imagine, but it was still interesting to see. Like it, this looks like something like her protege would make someone in a, who had took off, took her idea and took it differently. But Vivian pointed out like this particular piece, along with some others you'll see have gold in the hair and that was never done, but it sounds really interesting. This was the third one I ever made. Uh, I wrote a story about a, a girl escaping her past or something like that. And the images had some words and I'm not sure what happened and it cut her head off. Obviously, the system isn't perfect. Don't quite know why I kept cutting heads off in some of these pieces, but this is the only one I left in that was like this, but that's beautiful. You know, the tone and the, the coloring, it's totally a Vivian Works style. I'd imagine this thing is uh, at least uh, one of her full side pieces. And then I wrote in like something simple, like a snake, and then boom, you have another piece. So I've got to kind of click through these and we have all of them in here. And what's exciting about this whole concept is you know, Vivian thought it would be great to possibly put some of these out there as actual commission ideas. Certain pieces that qualify for her and her style that she would be interested in making. And we'll talk about those at the end, but they're included in the slideshow, but you don't know which ones. So everything in here that you see my name next to, technically, was all made by the AI system. And all these pieces that you're seeing, you know, are in her style without her ever seeing or knowing about it. Now, I see this as a way to, you know, put together new ideas and concepts and save a lot of the effort in a way of where the artists will have to spend time putting ideas and drawing and working it out with the art, with the clients when they're doing commissions. Maybe this could help. Maybe this could put together a uh, concept so you can really see what your clients are looking at, especially those who are real sticklers who really know what they want and you have no idea what they want. And you hope you're going to hit it. This is kind of a weird one too. I put something like uh, crying boys or sadness in this one. This is what popped out. I mean, you can write up to 300 letter, 300, 300 uh, characters, or just write something simple. This one was kind of hokey with his head free standing next to this piece, but it's very, very cool. I think I wrote this one was just a sleeping boy, something very similar, simple. But look at the cool tones. Look at the the blues on the torso of the, the robe that's sitting and the legs, how it matches. The, the thing he's sitting on. I've never seen Vivian do a, a rug or a base, but it's a possibility. You never would uh, think of something like that. So if you see something, you know, the idea is to, to take it and use it towards something that you possibly would want to commission and play with this. And hopefully I'll be able to work with this company and incorporate it on our website with certain artists that it work for, works for and have fun with it. So 
yeah, and they're they're pretty amazing. I mean, this is all. I had fun with Rainbow, something Vivian would never do, but I figured it would be fun just to play around. I also did He-Man and Pinball, but those aren't in the show here, just to see what the robot would change, and it really took it to a far left. But uh, I can definitely see her style in all these photos. So I'm going to kind of click through them so you can see these, and they're very, very cool. And I've been sharing them with Corey here at the gallery and uh, some, some of the people that I've uh, seen locally. Even people who aren't in the glass world I've shared the concept with because it's so interesting. Look at that red sash around the waist. It looks like a buckle coming down. Just, just creativity. It was kind of weird, though, because it started spinning the heads around and the bodies around. So the legs were facing front. But this is what you deal with at this particular point in the world of AI. I like this one a lot, too. The yellow forming. It looks like the, the cuffs are kind of hanging off. Freeform. This one has all the right toes. But again, face is cut off. And this is all made by the same exact AI system. This guy was a lot of fun, too. Little, little, little guy with the, with the yellow sash, a little baby warrior, ready to go to battle. But do not count the toes. Don't know what happened there. <laughs> and then you have your different colors. And they, the system learns, you know, what she works with, what her colors are, what her styles are like, based simply upon the 15 pictures that I uploaded. But I must admit, this is pretty visually pleasing to get a grasp into how AI could take uh, Vivian's work and create with it two boys sitting you can even see on the bottom of this picture has some weird reflection stuff going on no idea what's down there but obviously needed to put it there a mother and daughter maybe two different outfits made in the same amount of time as one via the ai system sometimes it started incorporating different kinds of hats based upon what i wrote you can have a hat made um, there was also a couple wedding ones, I think, were in there, veil. And I can't remember what I typed in for all these pieces. I got kind of, uh, the first few I wrote big sentences, and the last few I kind of relaxed a bit and just had fun trying to get context out. Let's continue on. I love the hat on this guy. Look at that. Almost like a pharaoh. And the hands sticking out, very similar to all of Vivian's works. Pick it in. Royalty. I love the pants on this guy. I love the the shirt on this guy. It has such subtlety to it and such beauty. It almost like it's in from uh, the Aquaman movie kind of character. And the the long. I mean, I, this is like fashion. Like I can't imagine people wearing this ten years from now. They have this really cool sash that goes down the front of your outfit. Like it's a long tie. It makes sense to me sitting on the subtle red cloth. On the sides there, it doesn't even fit the rest of the piece at all. And the face in this one's fantastic. Look at the detail on that face. Just beautiful. Another wonderful piece. Some It seems to know, like, you know, the colors Vivian works with. It doesn't really deviate too much unless I force it to by typing in rainbow or something. But it really keeps them all very steady. And it's, it's an amazing system. I got a little crazy. I typed in Final Fantasy, which is based off, like, a video game. And boom. This guy with his cool spiked hair in the front is totally looking like it's from a video game. Interesting in this piece, if you look at the hands, it has a slight hint of blue, as if there is something complete and new in concept we've never thought of before. But, I mean, it's there. And again, I love the the, the lighter tone to the outfit and the gold that's mixed in, and the, the, almost like the knee patches on the bell bottoms. So interesting stuff. Yeah, uh, Anthony asked, like, when Vivian, if you would unmute yourself and answer the question, when you originally looked at the photos that um, when I sent these to you, what did you feel? How did you decide and decide what worked for you and what didn't work in the generally? I guess. Um, click yeah. on the can you You're, hear me? You can hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I think a lot of the details uh, are workable. Um, I think it's very fascinating that AI chose certain details to repeat over and over again. You know, this red pillow, I think there must have been at least seven images with a red pillow. But then I started thinking, hmm, that's very attractive. I think maybe I'll do it with a red pillow. <laughs> so I think that's very useful for an artist, you know, especially for detail. Yeah, stuff you didn't think of before. But what? No, exactly, exactly. But something I you know, would do. So like looking at the work, I know you told me you wouldn't do a rainbow outfit. 
because no, it doesn't, I doesn't do work. Ring, but I would do this one. <laughs> see this image here with the dragons and the triple belt. You see, it's more into um, an Asian theme, whereas uh, I don't understand the rainbow thing. <laughs> right, it's just out of your wheelhouse. Yeah. Then there's some things that wouldn't work entirely based upon how glass and clay generally look, unless she were to dive into a mixed medium. She would, we're talking about pieces you'll see later, where it's a wedding veil where it's see-through. And Vivian's like, I can't do a wedding veil. And I'm like, you could buy a wedding veil. <laughs> so oh it's very it's it's tough it's tough to do anything see-through mm -hmm. you know with the um even with glass right i mean i think it can be done but it's just too much trouble right unless you just out. went and physically bought a physical veil which is a possibility right. yeah but then it's it'll look like a doll <laughs> right and right. tell me about this hat Vivian. you comment on this i don't know <laughs> i don't know where this hat came from it's very funny <laughs> I think it's very fun. It looks like something from, uh, you know, like a religious cult. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very weird. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, out of the box. I love the reds on this piece, though. Look at that. Cape. This, could, this could actually be the front of a garment. You know, mm -hmm. I know it's reading like the back, but it could be the front. It could easily be the front, right? Yeah, easily. This is the kind of thing where the heads turn around, but I had to put this one in because I just love the 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 center of the piece is so different it kind of reminds me i own a piece of vivian's work vivian's work the dragon warrior that has glass in the chest and this is like a big yeah, symbolism this, this in the middle of the chest glass piece as well um yeah. do you do you remember what you put in for some of these things you know because a lot of this stuff is still reading a little medieval which mm -hmm. i find very fascinating it kind of takes me out of my realm it's like you know this medieval stuff looks pretty good I think I put in, I know for this piece, I put in like royalty king with fiery beard and a golden crown. And uh -huh. that's what would come up. I was trying to figure out how to get the thing to pop out a beard, to put a beard on your glass. <laughs> you know, and then and they chose to do the beard out of glass, you know, yeah. in, in the concept. Of it. But it was very interesting. I've never seen you do a beard before until now. No, I don't think I ever will. <laughs> you don't have to. I, I, I hate beards. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, I love this one. <laughs> I, I really love this one. Yeah, beautiful tones it's all the way neutral. down. It needs a little more accents, but, uh, but anyway, the uh, the essential shape is there, which I like a lot. See, this also looks medieval to me. Mm -hmm. It could be very good. Yeah, Asian so. slash medieval. It has that outfit that has a real presence, you know, like you're, you're here in, in a royalty royal room. And this is my royal guard or my royal garb that I choose to wear. <laughs> and then we have little kids, little chubby um, boy. This is quite funny. He has no legs. He has no legs. I don't know, I don't know what's <laughs> in his lap. His hands uh, have some issues. I think it's a little creature. Yeah. It's a little human, human, I think, with ears. Very well. We're going to skip past this one. <laughs> well, these guys are completely doable they're like, they're like twin chinese twin brothers yeah they are twin twin brothers i, have I don't some, know what's in his hand i don't know what's in the hand strange either. thing in his hand yeah i have no idea i must have typed something weird in but you can see the details around the sides and i like how they both have the same outfit but they're slightly different slightly you know? different and also uh what this ai is doing is it keeps putting in these cushions Mm -hmm. I see like cushion de detail that they're sitting on, which right. could be very interesting. I mean, so, why not? Why not? You know, so, it could be an important color accent to your piece. <laughs> right. That's for sure. I mean, I put in the one piece that we had with a pillow into the system, which is probably why it's adding out to a lot of them, perhaps. Right. Especially but with it's the pieces. already sitting. changing the colors of them, which is great. Yeah. I, I never had a red pillow. And I know the red pillow keeps coming up in different images. So I just had a great idea from Andy Anthony Cohen that said that we should generate a Mr. Glass piece of yours with a hat, and we'll do that during this during this talk at the end, just so we can yeah, see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's continue on. We're getting close to it. This was a, definitely a weird one. I yeah. think I just typed in Queen, and it also we have a full figured red Queen walking down the hallway with a reflection of herself, maybe. 
And sometimes it goes off on weird tangents. And I definitely have noticed that with the AI, but it's okay. You click, you click reload and you have something else to see. Oh, this is the, with the veil. This is the one with the veil, right? Which is, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's all fabric. The whole thing's fabric. The whole thing looks like fabric. So if you ever want to get back into your old career, Vivian, <laughs> <laughs> have a little yeah, the fun. The bottom looks like or organza. It looks like organza and chiffon. Yeah, it does. Someone made a comment that uh, uh, Anthony again said, it'd be fantasy to see how AI combines styles of the content of two or three different glass artists in a virtual collab. I guess that's a great way of doing a test uh, to see if you possibly can work together too. If things can make that, sense. That would be very interesting. So another beautiful piece. I mean, I look at that stand, different tone. You've never made a brown stand as far as I know. In our career usually do only black, but something interesting right. to concept right. to think about. This was a wild one. This was earrings to see what she would, her Vivian Wang earrings would look like. So get in line. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll put these in the things to do someday down the road. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting close. It got a little wacky at the end. It did a bust, though. Vivian had to, has done bust pieces out of heads as of late, and it was great to see something totally different that the robot popped up. I'm not sure what I typed in. Maybe I typed in bust. Who knows? But very cool in style. I love the neck work on this particular. And then three boys. Oh, I don't want to do this one. This one will be it's done. Too much work. Right. <laughs> So let's see what we got here. So now that we've gone through a lot of the pieces uh, in the virtual, right? So we're going to talk about what Vivian has offered to create. And I'll be putting out a newsletter showing these particular pieces that um, Vivian selected from the, um, uh, the uh, Executive AI system. And someone asked, Julie asked if I subscribe to the program. And I don't subscribe. I, I use the free service at the moment. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. And before I show you these choices, um, uh, I'll tell you that the owner of the Executive AI has invited uh, Vivian and I to show some of these works on the front page of the website or in the promotional page of the website. Because obviously we caught their attention of creating something interesting on their site that is different than other people. And I agree it could be fun. So let me kick over to the site. I should have it up and running on my computer somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. It's not it. This is it right here. So let's go. Let's go on here. Okay. So we're here. Now you're seeing exactly the AI. You see, I have the Wang style selected up here. There's some other styles in there, but it's all I want to work on now is Vivian. So let's do one together. Unmute yourselves, everybody. Let's let's see. Let's see. We'll do. We'll do. Uh, we talked about a top hat, right? So we'll put top hat in. Anything else you want to add to this concept of this one that will generate? Um, Vivian, you want to add something to this yeah, one? What do you think? Beard. Thought? Okay. Uh, top hat man with a beard. Anything else, anybody? Okay. Yeah. Glasses. Glasses. That's interesting. Here. Here. Uh, so you're glasses. closer. Red tie. Glasses and a red tie. All right. Anything else, anybody? How about army boots? <laughs> okay, large army boots. <laughs> what else? We got put, I got lots more characters I can play with here. Um, tie. We had a red. We have a red tie. Oh, okay. All right. Jacket. Okay. Um, let's do. Uh, Own care cut. <laughs> large. What about different facial expressions? Jacket and. What did you say, Steve? A funky haircut. Punk. Punk haircut. Punk haircut. Beard. Be be you got beard already. What did you say, Eve, a second ago? How about different facial expressions? Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Um, smile. Diabolical smile. Okay. <laughs> I can't spell diabolical. Luckily, I have the robot to help me fix that. All right. All right. I think we're doing pretty good. Anyone want to add a color? Red. Ooh. White gloves. White. He's yeah. He's composing one. Gloves. Wow. Look. You know, Jesus. Uh, all right. I think, and we'll 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 add something ridiculous like um, like something about the oh, uh, how about a volcano? All right. 
and right. tattoo. Tattoo. Oh, tattoo is great. Okay, and tattoo. Magnifying glass. All right, we're going wild here. Get tight for life with me, but all right. Everybody good with what we got? I have a question before you start, Aaron. Sure, yeah. When you put the um, the Wang style in, did you have to upload photos of what Vivian had of her work, right? Yep. So earlier in the presentation, I showed you probably about eight of the six or eight of the photos I did. So that's right. Sorry, I came in a little late. No problem. So down here, we see. Go ahead, Corey. I, go ahead, Aaron. I'm sorry. I was going to say they have a, see down here where it says starter plan, which is what I have because it's the free account. I'm allowed 50 images a day. And you can play with this and up to three new models a day. And I have put zero models in today. And I only have about four or five in the entire system. And you can switch from model to model. And it comes with some free models to try out, which you can just play around with. And it offers you to just to type something in off the bat. You're, go ahead, Corey. And um, Aaron mentioned earlier, just, just to reiterate, um, we tried this with a number of different artists and some just don't work and others do. Usually artists that are uh, more representational seem to work a little bit better than more than more of the artists that we represent that are abstract. And, uh, but not, you know, some of them kind of worked, some of them didn't, but again, this is a tool. It's a fun tool to use and, and it's, it's no way should be taking away from the creative process, just adding to it. Yeah. Um, but we found uh, we were having a lot of fun with it. So um, I'm glad that uh, that this is kind of working. I'm very curious on what this is going to turn into. Like, yeah. So we were talking <laughs> about earlier about the, the linear works being more receptive yeah. currently in this system. So here we go, everybody. Yeah. Drum roll, please. Here we go. We're going to click create. And hopefully it will kick in here in a second. You never know how many people are using this site at the same exact time. And uh, hopefully we'll have some results. I have noticed that the app works better on the computer than on phones, by the way. Come on, robot. This is adding to my... Here we go. Oh, here he comes, everybody. Here he comes. There he is! No red tie. Red tie. Like uh, the Monopoly guy. <laughs> <laughs> Did not pass go. Did not collect $200. Congratulations, everybody. We are all collaborators today. Aaron, I think that I should mean, be the Zoom profile image from now on. Yeah. All right. I'm going to download it right here. We'll uh, we'll make that happen. So uh, just just at a glance at how we did it today, how long it took to do one, right? You're, you dump it, whatever you want. It can be abstract. So I did learn about this service through artist Tim Tate. He did tell me about it because he was messing and playing around with it already on his page and on his Facebook. And so I took it and took the advice from him and started playing around. And it's pretty amazing what it can do. So, all right, I'm get back on topic here. Thank you guys for having fun with me there for a second. Aaron, so, can you can you do it again and then something else pops up or what, what yes, happens? Yes, we can try it one more time. Why not? Try it one more time. Let's yeah, see I have happens. up to 50 per today. Oh, that's uh, a good idea. I want to see that. <laughs> we'll do one more because we got the time and we're having fun, which is which is great. So, it looks like Aaron, I just uploaded 15 images. Yeah. And I'm wondering how long it takes to create the model. Do you know? Ooh. It's creating. <laughs> oh, like there this it is. one more. This yeah, guy. Never mind. Is... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he looks you got older. a lot older. <laughs> it takes oh, about. Look. I said the same thing. This is, I'll just do all the whole day. Will be you just clicking the, the the create button and start downloading these, and we'll we'll put them all out there for everybody to choose on on, on Instagram or Facebook. But hey, Aaron, yeah, do you have to ask for a full image if you want a full image, or, or you get what you get? That's a great question, um, Carrie. First, it takes about twenty minutes. Second, okay, uh, thank you, Ray. I tried that. I tried saying full figure or, um, you know, bust or whatever. And it didn't really listen to me too much. It did what it wanted to oh. do based upon what I provided it. Mind you, I mind you, I said I provided it with pictures of the backs, detailed shots of pieces up close. So I'm sure there's probably a way if I asked the owner or someone who really knew it, what terminology I could use to that computer would understand. And, um, but I haven't done that enough. I've just been playing around. By creating Top Hat Man here. Here's our, here's our next one. See, it's kind of cut off already. 
Oh, this one's looking pretty styling. <laughs> what is in his pocket? <laughs> liquor. It looks like a bottle of liquor. All right, that or a vape pen. <laughs> it does look like a big old vape pen. Look at that tie. There's your tie. Look at the mouth. Mm, it's got red lips. <laughs> right, I can't out. stop myself one more time just because we, we're fun. having a good time here. And it's just, this is a. Uh, this is not. These are not Vivian Wang works, by the way. These are just. Oh exactly dot ai creations and we're getting kind of back to the first version but we'll see got the red tie this time oh <laughs> very nice i like the glasses Whoa, look a lot like mine i like yeah, it yeah, look at okay yeah high styling all right so from now on guys we're going to do one for each of you in the future and everybody's going to take over social media yep. with these things all right so, so back program allow you what did you say 50 a day yep 50 a day it, oh 50 free. 50 a day okay. for free, which I think for is three way days more than or for how for many days? Forever. As long as you have a free account right now, it's 50 a day for free. Holy which shit. Pretty right. cool, huh? All right. I, I'm creating my model. I'm so excited. Yeah. I think you took the first three or four suggestions and ran with it and not the rest of the descriptors. That's very possible. True. Right. The idea That's is true. it works the way it wants to. And I could have written a different way. But you have 300 characters, and it's going to choose what it wants every time. And you can modify it anytime you want. You can do one and do a whole new one the second time and third, which I mostly did, because it's, you have a variety of styles and ideas. But you could just do one all day long and see, see what it does. I mean, you can type in abstract things, too. You can type in nothing and see what it does. So, all right, back to the AI choices. So, Vivian Wang looked through these, the pieces that were available in the AI style. And she liked a few of them, up to eight. And so this is the first one. I just called them VW01 through VW08. So people have something to reference should you want one of these. And they are available as of now. I have no idea what they would cost. I have no idea the scale. We'll have to talk to Vivian about all this kind of stuff. But if you're interested, let me know. And we can start talking and putting it together. So this is the first one. Second one from the AI selection. Another one that she chose. Loving the style. I like the, I like the challenge in this particular one of incorporating gold into the hat, um, but doable, according to Vivian. Maybe you can incorporate what you liked about this one, Vivian, when you chose it. Oh, I just, I like the design of it. It's a seated figure. Mm -hmm. Seated figure incorporating yeah. beautiful yellows. It's a, it's, a, it's a warrior. It's a warrior outfit. Mm -hmm. So it would probably be an older boy, an older boy or a young man. Gotcha. Yeah, I love it too. And then we have our little our little warrior. This one's just for fun. <laughs> With real feet though. He'll protect your living room or your kitchen or the front door <laughs> at all times. Interesting hands though. Look at how like the uh the coloring goes onto the hands. I think uh there are gloves on the hands, yeah, like half like gloves. Half gloves, right. Yeah. And I love how, like, the outfit looks like it incorporates into the accessory, too, right? Whatever that's hanging down incorporates into the chest. Very interesting. I love this piece. Look at those. Beautiful, beautiful sculpture. I love the, the shoulder silver. Interesting. And mind you, they won't turn out exactly like this. It's based upon, you know, how it comes together. But that's part of the fun. Wow, oh, this is the one I love, too. This W06. Great piece. Beautiful incorporating the gold in the in the hat another great one that vivian liked we this talked about this I one really like, yeah mm -hmm. freestanding multiple parts of the outfit that fit well together with a slight hit of red and vivian will create a story of what and why right vivian yeah <laughs> we'll do and then of course the um the two boys from the beginning was one of the ones that choose and i had to Nice. Let's see what's going on here with the computer here. So, like, um, because they have a reflection. It's so, like they don't look like uh, tying into the exciting news of this concept actually working, um, this last piece was commissioned already from the virtual pictures. So, we're getting started already using this kind of style to create work so that will end up in people's homes. So, we'll, hopefully, we'll follow along with this process of Vivian as these two figures come into reality i'm real excited about so that's exciting news maybe this platform of virtual artwork will help people come together and create 
and work together better if that concept works. But the idea is it's new and different and we're excited about it. So I'll stop sharing my screen. And, you know, if you have any more questions, let me know. I'd love to answer them to my ability. And, uh, and can like, you print from uh, can you print from them from virtual? So the answer is yes, you can print from the virtual up to a certain size for free. And then after that, you have to pay for the higher quality downloads up to a certain point. I think it goes up to like 4K or something, which is what your TV does. And then beyond that, you'd have to take it somewhere else for someone to upscale the photo to do something with. But I haven't really played around with that. All I've been playing around with is the free side of it. But you would have a digital version as well, which is kind of cool in my mind. I'd love to see, Aaron, a, a follow-up Zoom of the completed piece and the image of what it looks like side by side it would be kind of uh, fascinating i, I think, think we idea. can arrange that yeah for sure we can do that we can do the first ever virtual piece through habitat completed anthony you had a uh, a question i don't know if you're still here to, to ask it yeah, yeah please do yeah i was wondering has anybody hooked this up to a 3d printer so that you could get not only the 2d image but a 3d printout of what it would actually look like as far as I know, no, but it's very possible. I just saw in, I, I guess- Just these, eliminate the artist altogether. <laughs> right. I mean, I saw uh, today that a 3D printed home that someone can make. So, I mean, at, at the end, it's a tool. A 3D printer is a tool. Artists use that same kind of thing. Will it look like what Vivian's work looks like printed 3D? Not today. <laughs> Not even close. I know what I want it to. But, uh, I mean- Aaron. I mean, yeah. Hi, Hal. Hey, Hal. Um, you know, we we had commissioned uh, uh, Marlena Rose to do a piece for us uh, right. of, a, of a Japanese uh, uh, lantern. Lan garden lantern. Um, and sure. it would have been very useful to have used this because she wasn't that familiar with Jap with Japanese garden lanterns mm -hmm. and um, it would have made the process it, it turned out wonderful but it would have made the process I think uh, much more rapid because we had to look up multiple images mm -hmm. and, uh, and try to find something that would work but th this would have worked great for for us thank you Hale I think so too she could have bombarded you with photos <laughs> without leaving your desk from the system itself. And then you would have chosen what you liked and tweaked it from there. I think there is an ad, 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 it's, it's advantageous to take advantage of this technology with what we do to make everybody's life easier and to make ourselves clear, I guess. you know, Usually artists don't disappoint, but having this just to help as a tool is very important. Anything so Aaron, else? have yeah. most of the artists um, been positive to this and embraced it or is there some resistance so i've only talked to vivian about it uh okay <laughs> really just because i didn't know and i was so excited about what i made and she was excited about it too that uh, right she, you know she saw i should let her talk about it what do you think about this whole experience vivian i think it's very interesting i think it gives us a lot of ideas you know it's uh oh. because um Artists tend to, well, I don't know about all artists, but I know many artists always uh, get trapped in a certain theme, get trapped in a certain way of doing things. And I think this gives you another approach, you know, another idea, um, something that you never thought of before, you know. So I do think it's very useful. There are specific details about these, um, these images that I find are very interesting that I am going to copy, you know, <laughs> like the Sorry. that uh, that Sorry. sixteen the um, that sixteen year old girl where you had the head cut off, you know that whole midriff with the metallic belt and the uh, multi pleats is something I never thought of doing, and I think that is very interesting for me to pursue. But I I really do like that you had mixed in some a couple of medieval stories yes here you see you see that pleated and then the belt that is all metallic i thought that was great also the shoulder shields there are a lot of details 
that, um, that are doable, that I think are extremely interesting to take forward. So it basically it's, it's, you know, it's, as long as it's clear what we're doing and it's okay with the artist, I think it can be very, very fun, but I'll let you know how more reception is coming because it's so new and it's getting excited about it. So I decided to do the zoom because I want, I think it's revolutionary and, you know, over time, more and more artists will take advantage of this and be able to create. How cool would it be if you went to Vivian's site and she has a whole page of possibilities? And you can say, oh, wow, these are really amazing. Let's have, a, let's have fun. I like this one. Let's have a dialogue about it. And it can come to fruition and you're, you're excited about it. And you'd be part of the process and you have the print up from the beginning. And I think it adds, adds a, lot, a lot to the experience. But what it does is I think is it opens up the, the conversation. You know, it opens up mm -hmm. a conversation. You can use it to create something. And then, you know, it's not going to be exact. And, and artists are going to go uh, with the client back and forth. But it gets them involved in the process. Not, It's not going to work 100% of the time. But that's not what it's for. It's just, you know, it's for, for just to create that dialogue and keep it rolling between the artist and the client. Yeah, bringing the familiarity and the trust is is another tool for, for, for this entire process. It's just like one time we had a phone, next time we had a fax machine. This tool now exists for us to, to use and to explore. Aaron, yeah, Aaron, be interesting to hear Steve uh, talk, Steve Lynn talk about how he, what his first reaction would be to his work, for his work using AI. Join us. Um, I, have no, I have no idea, I mean, because my work, each piece be, being uh, a documentary portrait of a specific character, and it involves uh, lots of different uses of materials, lots of different uh, shapes, forms. Um, the only thing that's virtually consistent with my work in the last, uh, you know, 15, 10, 15 years is that they're wall works. Uh, but other than, other than that, I mean, some pieces have uh, um, 3D images, you know, with the holograms. Some pieces um, are, you know, uh, more on the cast glass side. Some are on the sandblasted carved glass. Um, I'm currently working on a, on, on a piece about uh, the Black Indians of, of New Orleans, which are a, a masking uh, thing. And um, there's an enormous amount of beadwork in that piece. As in the mm -hmm. piece that I did about El Anatsui, there is a lot of uh, uh, small, small pieces that make a large tapestry. So how that relates to another person or another subject, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see what, you know, if you fed in my piece about uh, Stephen Hawking, Ai Weiwei, El Anatsui, and, and uh, maybe three or four other pieces, fed that into this system, and then came up with a particular character, a particular subject, see what, what would spit out. I, uh, I'm, I'm fascinated for sure. <laughs> On that same note, like the system works with one picture too. You could upload one single piece of Steve's work and put the concept in and see what happens. It probably won't be as, uh, you know, have a variety of things, but it's worth a try. I'm not no. sure it would be good or not no. by far, but it's part of the, the process is playing around with these systems as they're being developed. I think it's interesting how AI choosing to um, show the image with it's almost confusing light sources. So that's yeah. the difference between, I mean, the heads. I'm going to mute somebody who's not muted. Give me one second, guys. I'm going to actually, I'm going to mute everybody real quick because someone is talking. Will you say that again? Was it Eva saying that? It's me, Julie. Oh, Julie. Um, Julie. I, um, I noticed in all of them they it had they have conflicting light sources. Yeah. And, um, so I don't know. Like I said, I came in about four or five minutes late, so I don't know if you showed an image of. Yeah, I'll show you. Um, I'll, show you I'll see what it look like side by side. You, yep. Then you can kind yeah, of. I'll show tell. you right. Give you an idea of what I uploaded. This is like a sample 
one, two, three, four, five out of the 15 pictures that were uploaded originally. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the other pictures were backs too. You yeah. Know, just to give the whole concept of teaching the AI what Vivian's work looks like. Right. And that was what I did. And you can see the lighting's different on all of them. Mm -hmm. This particular piece right here, the blue girl was shot by a totally different photographer too. So, right. you know, it, it's just. But they all have a a light source. <laughs> yeah. They all have a light source of some sort and they're taking Where the AI that. ones have multiple light sources, if you look closely, which is interesting that it chooses to do it that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes there's multiple pieces for some reason. <laughs> no real like <Right. laughs> explanation of why right. like this particular piece, there's three figures, half of them are cut off. And mm -hmm. I didn't upload anything even close to that. And you can see the st steam line here, but it's just playing around. Like I said earlier too, for every one of these you're seeing, there was five or six that I didn't save because they were weird or they were very <laughs> similar to other ones or their heads were backwards or they, like I've done other artists and there's, they're adding extra arms. The whole thing just plays on itself. But Do you think that the program gets more intricate if you pay for it? I doubt it. I think you just get more access to oh, the context. Okay. The higher quality, more more services and more, better pictures. To be honest, it takes a long time for the AI to become smarter. Usually about a year. I know. I think we're on like Chat GBT three point five or four. So they keep updating these numbers next to them, showing evolution. I mean, our new phones update every year. So why can't the AI services? So right. inevitably, you know, that thing, whatever you're paying for, will get better, and you'll just pay more for whatever you get because they're adding more to it over time, and costs go up. But yeah, I think it's a cool tool. It's just interesting how how we're starting out, you know what I mean, and how where it's going to go. Yep. Anthony, go ahead. Um, Aaron, I was just wondering, did you check out multiple different AI platforms to find out which one was the best one for this particular project? Or were you basically just playing with one or two that you happened to come across while you were browsing? It's a great question. It's the latter. As I was exploring different AI services, I came across this one, which I played with the most. When I was doing the research for this presentation, I was trying to find out what else there was out there similar to this. I couldn't find much, though I'm sure there is other stuff. This one was up to my level of um, expectation. It took the photos in, it did the work fast, and it was free, right? So... There, there might be other services. Like I was trying to find something similar to Midjourney for this presentation. I found the other service and it, it took four minutes to do one photo. And that's not up to my level of expectation. So it, it's kind of like if it's, if it's working right now, I'm going to, I'm going to keep playing with this one until things change and start charging me. Um, but, and everybody should play around with it. You know, there's no real wrong answer here. You can upload a bunch of your hats and have it make a hat for you. There's nothing really, it does not designed, it's not designed for um, making commissions. It's designed for creativity and making other options of things that you upload to it. It just applies to me and our artists with the artwork we have. And I happen to have a lot of artwork on my computer. So uh, it, it could be exciting. I mean, if you, you could even upload, someone wrote about an AI makeover, Anthony did. You could even upload 15 pictures of yourself <laughs> right i don't know if you could just do your face or you could do yourself wearing an outfit and see what it does there's 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 applications beyond my scope but we're just having fun here so any other I, uh, I, oh, oh, go I was messing with uh chat gpt on on a flight that i just recently took and i wrote an entire romance novel within well did i write it i don't know if i wrote it i wrote <laughs> the outline of the novel and it wrote a you know, 3,000 word, <laughs> you know, I think each chapter is 3,000 words. It's, uh, or, uh, it, it's, a, it's a full novel. You know, it's it's unbelievable. I haven't even read the whole thing. I was get, trying to get through. Wait, is it was... any good, Corey? Is it no, it's is horrible. It... <laughs> it's, it's, it's trashy, like, you know, it's about the glass blower and the art dealer. You know, you don't want to hear that. You know, I, she go okay, I'll, I'll ruin it for you. She ends up with the glass blower, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny it's yeah, amazing fantastic. just the possibilities it's absolutely incredible and it, I, I i love this aaron that you're you're diving into you know what's this is new you know it's exciting and you're, and you're jumping into it and i and i absolutely love just the possibilities and all the doors that i could open 
Thanks, man. I appreciate that so much. It does. It does open a lot of doors. And it, it it's it creates accessibility too for people who can't get the concepts out of what you want too. Like if you particularly want something, let's say you want a green elf, you know, the robot can help put that together to make what you're looking for in concept to convey your message to the artist in the real. And that can come together, which is very exciting. Any other questions? And I'm happy to send you, I have the chat GBTs that were put together about the top artists in its mind, um, how uh, AI can be used to create art. And the other one that Larry Seabrook sent me about AI, or, or sorry, AI's description of what uh, glass artists and the effect on the environment. I'm happy to send this. Anybody just sent me an email. They're just three uh, word files, which is kind of exciting, but also gets you in the concept of uh, AI, AI writing. And I know it's a pattern in a way where it's recognizable by some people, but long story short, it's it's part of our world today. And we'll be probably, probably 80% of the stuff you read today might be written by a computer. Who knows? But thank you all for joining me today. I hope you had a great time. Um, if you, uh, want to play around with us, you can give me a call. We can always put something together. I'm going to make a couple more AI Aaron Vivian Wangs that we put together just to have them for uh, for this. And thank you, Vivian, for joining me today. It was great to have you here to talk about this. And like I said, if any of those particular commissions jump out at you, let me know if you want to help me make your own to show her. Happy to do that too. Thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. You, have you tried it on my work? Yeah, we'll try it on your work too. Oh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, please share, subscribe, hit that bell all that kind of stuff. We will, everybody. I've got some images to send you. I'm psyched. Yeah, please do. It'll this be a lot crazy. of fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Thanks stop for coming. ruining my day. <laughs> no problem, Carrie. Oh, my God. <laughs>